I'm Rob. I am a hobbyist CNC woodworker. And I also sometimes make videos. I live in Casa Grande, Arizona, and earlier this month, a Casa Grande police officer passed away from COVID. I've made badges in the past for the police department, and they asked me to make a special one for him and his owner. This video is about the build process for that badge. Before we head out to the CNC machine, I want to show how we have this set up in VCarve Pro, which is our CAD software. The Casa Grande police badge is very busy. There's a lot going on there, so I've tried to break it down into understandable areas. I call this layer the banners, obviously. Got the banners there. And then inside the banners, we have the title up there. I've also had, in the past, Sergeant, Detective, PTO. There's even been some more there I'm not showing right there. And the badge number down there. Each other on layer, they're all red. We get to the state seal. Again, that's pretty busy. There's actually multiple versions of the Arizona State Seal out there. I've done that design on different projects, and people want slightly different versions. So I have a few of those floating around out there. And the flags, we have the US flag and the Arizona flag on each side of that. The building, again, lots going on here. Each leaf comes out very nice. When we get to the CNC, you'll be able to see the detail. It does for little leaves and things like that. It spends quite a bit of time cutting those trees. Amazing amount of time, actually, but it comes out nice. We have rays on the background here for the center part. And we have the rings around the edge of the badge. They're in green there. Some pockets, which don't show up much here, but we'll see later. You can see it's a little deeper here and here, and back here actually is deeper. And then the final thing we'll see now is the cutout. And then actually, let's look at the back side too. I, if we go to the back, that's what the text will be there. And then I actually have my logo on there too. For the badge, I'm not going to, I'll paint the text, and this will just be more of a watermark. It will not be painted. So I don't want to be prominent, but actually, the officer I'm working with setting this up, he was adamant. He wanted my logo on there. He wanted me to get some credit for this. So I appreciate that, though. That's not why we're doing this. So let's move over to the 3D view of this. I'm going to hit reset here. I have it broken down into different bits on here. So we have the end mill, the quarter eighth inch end mill. There's different versions. What I'm calling like the state seal and I don't see much there. Different things when it cuts out. And then there's the the V bit. I'll click that, it highlights all of them. You can see the, the detail it's going through and the red is the path where it's not cutting. Lots of lines of code here that go to the machine, and then the wider V bit for the text that comes out. So I'm going to hit uh, reset and preview what we've just highlighted there. Let it go through and give a nice rendering of what it's going to look like on the end. If you look down this corner right here, you can see Z. That's how the deep the cut is. So right here it's zero, but here's a pocket I mentioned. It's uh, a sixteenth of an inch basically deep. That goes around here. The depth where these rays are, again, 0.06. I think it's an eighth of an inch thick around the state seal. And the little cuts there are 0.04 basically. So that's a good idea of what it's going to look like when it's done. This 3D software does a good job of showing what things are going to look like in preview mode. It's very helpful both for me to design it to see what it looks like I want, and for the end user to approve or say, no, change it this way. I've sped up the video, uh, I think, four times here, so it's not quite so time-consuming just to watch me cut up some wood. When they asked me to do this project, I didn't have time to run up to Phoenix to the local wood store where I buy all my hardwoods, so I had to look through my stash, and I had both cherry and some hard maple. I decided that cherry was the way to go. I've used it in the past on some badges and it came out really nice. It carves well, not much chip out. 
and when you put just a clear coat, it looks great. No staining and like that. So that's what I decided to do with the wood types. Now that everything's cut to size and it's a clean edge on both sides, I'm ready to line it up so I think the grain looks like a good pattern. It matches up well. It takes a little bit of trial and error, but not that tough. And then it's time to glue up all the boards. Put them in that same order again we just did for matching it. And put some glue on the edges. And in this case, I put way too much glue on, but too much is better than not enough. We're going to have a lot of squeeze out here, but that's, that's fine. Once we're happy, there's a level transition between the boards. It's time to tighten it up real tight. And I always put a clamp on top so that if the bottom ones are bowing at one direction, this one should bow it to the other direction so we have a nice flat board. After letting the glue set up overnight, it's time to finally get to the CNC machine. The first step is pretty simple. We want a nice flat surface for our carving so our images will be nice and sharp. So we do a skimming coat to get it perfectly flat. This next step is something that I do personally is a little more unique. Most people don't do this. I put down a layer of either wood filler, a water-based wood filler, or joint compound. Real thin layer is all it takes. And then later this will help for stopping some of the chip out. And more specifically, it will help getting a nice sharp edge when doing the painting. We'll see that later in the video. I thought I had a great idea for a camera angle, putting it right by the router so it would move around like you see here. In the end, actually, between stabilization and it going so fast, it made you get a little bit seasick. So we deleted that scene. So the scene I deleted was where the end mill, or the, the bit with the flat bottom, it carved out those pockets you can see there. This next tool path is where the V bit is doing the more detailed part of the badge. Right now it's doing the state seal. It'll eventually do all the other things that take detail, like the building, the flags, etc. Back when I first started out CNCing, Designing a badge like this was quite a bit beyond my skill level. I'd done a basic badge for the Pinal County Sheriff's Department, which I worked for the Pinal County IT, so I had a good relationship with them. But I wanted to do a Casa Grande badge. The Casa Grande Police uniform has a patch on the shoulder, which is uh, the city logo and protect and serve Casa Grande Police. Much simpler, and I was able to design that on my own, and I, I cut one out, and through a friend, it got donated to the police department. Over time, I kept trying to design this police badge on my own, and I still failed each time. It's, it's a quite complex one, and it was beyond my skills at that point. I finally reached out to the police department uh, to ask if they would be willing to give me a copy of their badge file, and they remember me doing that badge in the past, the patch, and they were more than happy to give me a f the file. From that, I did my first badge, and I donated it back to the police department. After donating that first badge, I assumed I'd be done doing police badges for Casa Grande. I was trying to do other badges and other projects, and I was happy with what I was doing. They really liked that badge, and they reached out to me to do things like retirement badges, or for some volunteers, or just people who wanted a badge, or a spouse who wanted a present for their spouse. So I ended up doing quite a few over the years. I've also done badges for other groups, like Pinal County Sheriff's Office, uh, City of Mesa, Border Patrol. I've donated, I think this will be the seventh donation I've done since I started doing this, and I've charged for others. It's no secret. I'm, this is a hobby. I'm not trying to make a profit, but I'm certainly trying to at least break even. To be honest, my wife would not appreciate it very much if this was not a break-even hobby. The next tool bath is still for another V-bit, but it's a much wider V-bit. It does a lot better job for text. Earlier in the video, I talked about putting joint compound down on the badge. At this point, I'm painting inside the spots that have been carved. So it'll be on top of the joint compound and then inside the area that's cut. As you can tell, I'm not a very good painter. At this point in the painting process, my only goal is to glob a lot of paint inside the areas that have been cut. Fast forward a little bit after the paint has dried. Now I've got my sander with a hose attachment to 
suck up any dust, I'm sanding off the badge. Did I mention how much I hate painting? This does a great job of leaving a sharp edge on the project without me doing any detailed painting. For any other CNCers out there watching this video, I did do a video on this process a while back that goes more in depth. And here I am using the air hose just to get the dust out of the nooks and crannies. For the areas of the banner that say the words Casa, Grand, and Arizona, I painted the background black. I didn't actually record that part, but you'll see it in a second. And on to the finishing process. For finishing on this badge, I'm using General Finishes Armor Seal. It's a white bond polyurethane. And the first coat I go very heavy uh, for a couple reasons. It absorbs quite a bit, that first coat. And also I want to get it in the a lot of nooks and crannies there, so you go a little extra and deep in the text. Again, I want to get saturate those areas really well. That's all the live video. Now I have some still shots of the badge, starting with my logo on the back side and then a zero in on the lower part and the middle and the upper part of the actual badge. And then I'll finish up with a full shot of the badge and then a full shot of the back side of the badge. If you've made it to the end of this video, I want to thank you for watching the whole thing. It's been a special project for me. I would encourage you to like and subscribe to the channel. I'm in the upper 700s for subscribers, and there's some advantages to having 1,000 subscribers, so I really would appreciate if you would subscribe. Thanks for watching.